Good morning, church. It's Sunday, November 7th, and we're really glad that you're worshiping online with us this morning. We especially want to welcome anyone who's worshiping online with us for the first time. We're really glad that you're with us today. As always, I encourage you to go to beachfaith.com, click on the worship online, or use the QR code to go to that page to find all kinds of information that will help you to worship with us online today. We encourage you to sing with us, to get your Bible out and read along with our liturgists, to uh, pray the prayers, to be present with God as we encounter God together uh, as a part of this online community. Today is All Saints Sunday. As you can see behind me, we're prepared for the ritual of remembrance, which will happen later in worship. I invite you to think about those in your life who we remember on this All Saints Day, and perhaps if you don't have a candle, to place a candle in your home worship space and light that as a part of our ritual of remembrance today. Our uh, sermon today is another way of love sermon about the scripture Ruth 1, 1 through 18. We're going to look at that and see a story about uh, a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law who find themselves in a position of grief and the ways that God calls them to be community together, to rest in the love and care of each other as they grieve and figure out what it is that God is calling them to next in their lives. And it begs us to ask the question, where is it in your life that you need to rest? In what ways are you neglecting rest because of the busyness that culture tells you is really important? Lots of great stuff to wrestle with today as we think about this way of love. Let's worship God. God is here. Let us encounter God in this time together. Good morning, church. Please join me in our call to worship. What joy is it to have you here today? We have come from very busy lives, filled both with joys and difficulties. Welcome to this place in which God will ease your burdens and celebrate your joys with you. We have come to find hope and peace in our lives. Whatever has happened this week in your life, know that God is with you and offering you peace, rest, and blessing. Thanks be to God who accepts us as we are, and thanks for the warm welcome in this service of worship. Amen. As lives who once was dead Join me now the deathless voices Child of God, lift up your head Patriarchs from the distant ages Saints all longing for their end Prophets, psalmists, seers and sages All await the glory Forward wonders crowd on faith, what joy unknown when amidst earth's 
closing thunders, saints shall stand before the throne. Oh, to enter that bright portal, see that glowing firmament, know it the oh God immortal, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Let us pray. Lord, we have come to you this day, bringing all that we have, our lives, our hopes and dreams, our fears and sorrows. We place these before you in faith and hope, knowing that no matter what has happened, you are with us and blessing us. Open our hearts to receive your words and your spirit that we may find healing and comfort. Open our lives to the wondrous possibilities for service and joy that you offer to us. Ease our minds and spirits that we may hear the words of encouragement and peace this day. Amen. John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. 
and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malan and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives and the name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malan and Kilian also died so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, on this day when we remember and grieve, give thanks and look to you, our rock and redeemer, for grace and hope. We are grateful for the saints who've gone before us, for their lives, for the ways they've witnessed to their faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus. And we pray, O oh God, that we might honor their legacy and how we live and follow you. Bless our tender hearts and spirits. Comfort us and challenge us in love to grow in our trust in you. Open our hearts and minds and spirits to hear your word for us today. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
You know, there are stories in the Bible that preach to our circumstances, to our times. Stories and scriptures that provide comfort and mercy when we suffer and grieve. Words of grace and forgiveness when we mess up and need accountability. There are words of hope and resurrection when we experience trauma and loss. Words and stories for whatever emotion we might experience. There are also stories and words for when we are called to justice or to repentance. The Bible is a rich and valuable library filled with relatable stories of the human condition and how others have experienced and encountered God in low times, in mundane and ordinary times, in good times, and everything in between. We are still waxing, we are still in the waxing and waning of a global pandemic, and we're just beginning to understand the ramifications of it on our lives. It will take us some time to process the collective trauma that we've experienced and make sense of it. I can't help but see a connection between the story and Ruth and where we find ourselves currently. We've all experienced so much. Ruth is four chapters long and has a total of 80 verses. There are chapters in the Gospel of Mark longer than the entire book of Ruth. How's that for a bit of trivia to wow your friends and neighbors with? In recent years, part of chapter 1 of Ruth is often read at weddings, and like 1 Corinthians 13, it's been taken out of context. The speech often uses a promise between a daughter-in-law and a mother-in-law, and I don't think many brides want to say those words to their mother-in-law as intended. Really, this book should be called Naomi. Ruth is a supporting character in it, and while she is the bearer of the male child, Obed, who will become the grandfather to King David, it is really about Naomi and her journey. Now, Ruth is a story that's gained traction in recent years because it brings up all kinds of issues of injustice. And those issues are important to examine and with which to wrestle. But today we're going to encounter it not from the justice framework, but rather from the grief framework. Because the book of Ruth is also a book about grief, one that offers to us some important lessons for our lives. The first thing that this story teaches us is that contrary to the binary thinking of our world today, not everything is either or. Our world is very comfortable with binary thinking. You're a Democrat or Republican, you're for vaccines or against. There's the light side or the dark side of the force, though to be fair, The further you dive into Star Wars, you see and learn that even the light and the dark sides are not so cut and dry. I think you get the idea. In our world today, if someone doesn't fit into your side of of your binary way of thinking, they must be wrong or worse. There's little grace to be found in this way of thinking and living. I find this to be true of lots of things, including how one is supposed to grieve because many are uncomfortable with grief, if they're honest, and the big feelings that many experience when they grieve, it is easy to push, say, toxic positivity or to place a time limit on another's grief. Or say there's a certain way one should grieve. The fact of the matter is, there is no one way to grieve. As many different people as there are on this planet, there are that many different ways to grieve. Every person has their own journey, and it is up to us to realize that another's grief is not about us. Chapter 1 begins with the story of how these women got into a really hard situation, and it talks about the way the three women dealt with the, the immense trauma they just experienced. And this illustrates this powerful point. Let's think for a moment about the collective trauma they experienced going to a foreign land to survive because of famine at home, having the men who in that culture were the center of survival and life die, leaving them with no income, no security, no real future, and they also happen to be deep in grief. There is no binary way to respond to this trauma and grief, is there? And we see this in the story, don't we? And none of them are more right than the other. I'll do what is best for them. Take Orpah, for example. Orpah cuts her losses 
and takes the pleas of her mother-in-law seriously, and she turns around and she heads home. That's an understandable response, all things considered. It's what she felt she needed to do to survive. And then there's Naomi's response to what's happened. It's filled with big and challenging emotions that are often difficult for people to hold space for. Naomi, in a few verses, helps us to know that she is overwhelmed by the tragic circumstances she finds herself in, empty, drained of any purpose or hope for the future, bitter and resentful, angry with God for allowing such a tragedy to happen, and she wants to be left alone. Again, under the circumstances and knowing the stages of grief, which Elizabeth Kubler-Ross suggested could be experienced in any order, read, no binary way of experiencing grief, it is understandable that Naomi would respond this way. It is her grief journey, one that she wanted to do alone. And then there's Ruth's response. She refuses to allow Naomi to grieve and suffer alone, isolated uh, and isolated. Ruth needed a companion in her grief. And so Ruth doubles down, doesn't she, in her commitment to Naomi. I'm not about to leave you for a moment, she says. Where you go, I go. Your people are my people. Your God, which you are angry with, is my God. And she doesn't stop there. She asks God to punish her if she doesn't keep this promise and commitment she's made. She's asked God to hold her accountable. Ruth shows up and lifts up Naomi and carries her forward, not telling her to get over it or uh, to get over how she feels and to not grieve as she needs to grieve. She takes responsibility for their welfare and allows Naomi to rest in her love. As we think about the way of love that Jesus calls us to, it is an important challenge when the world tries to push us into binary thinking to allow space and grace of what others might be experiencing so that we might understand better how to respond. The story also teaches us some important lessons on how to journey with those who are grieving. In many ways, Ruth was the perfect comforter to help Naomi through her grief. Walter Rannigan, in Mourning into Dancing, writes the following ideal qualities for someone caring for a loved one coping with grief and loss. First, know the grief process, but know the griever more. Second, Make peace with your own death and with death itself. Three, do not expect gratitude, meek obedience, rational behavior, or thanks. Expect nothing for yourself. Four, you are not expected to fix the mortal break, but to companion the broken. And five, your presence is more important than any solution you might propose. Stay with them abide. Ruth fit the bill, so to speak. She abided with Naomi, didn't expect anything in return, and allowed Naomi to go through her grief journey fully. You know, so often when someone experiences trauma or loss, we think we need to have the right words or do the right things. Now, I could give a clinic on what not to do or say. I've seen I've about seen it all in my vocational life, and I have experienced some of it personally in my own grief experiences. I think what the story of Ruth teaches us is that the best thing to do is to be present, to be really present to big emotions, expecting nothing in return, sharing love and offering rest in the fact that another doesn't have to go through their grief alone. Who do you know that who is grieving right now that might be blessed by a call or a visit? Time where you might offer an ear and empathy and space to share the depth of what they are experiencing. The final thing I want us to think about today is the silence of Naomi in the story. When she speaks up, it is filled with big emotions, as we've talked about, with grief and suffering and anger, to name a few. More uh, scholar, Morian Fullerton Strollo points to the, to the last verse or the last line of our reading for today. It says, 
When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So often, Strollo suggests, stories like this story in the Bible end up with the characters repenting for their doubts, giving thanks and praising God. And she points to the book of Job as a great example of this. But that's not what happens here. Her reading stops on Naomi's silence, a place of discomfort we know and we experience in between grief and joy. Strollo writes, the good news of the book of Ruth is that blessings can still come even when we are in the midst of grief, in the throes of anger and frustration. Naomi's story also teaches us that if we're not ready to acknowledge those blessings, that's okay. She finishes, those who are not ready to acknowledge blessing, those who are still struggling with the anger and angst of grief and struggle can find solace these days in Naomi's story. Ruth's story is an invitation to rest in God's love and grace and to remember Jesus' words in John 14. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. May we find ways to abide with others and allow them to journey through their pain to blessing and hope. And may others offer us the same in our times of need. As it says in 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul wrote, God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you for your continued joyous and faithful giving, your tithes and offerings to God's glory and to the ministry that we do from this place. We are grateful for your continued support and faithfulness. As a reminder, there are three ways that you can share those tithes and offerings with the church. The first is you can mail those into the church or you can drop them in the church mail slot. The second is to use the QR code or to go to beachfaith.com, click on uh, the donate or give button and find two secure ways to give online there. The third way is the text to give option. That information is on the screen for you now. Use that number and follow those instructions. It will send you uh, a link to complete your transaction back to your cell phone or your smartphone. It's a pretty fantastic way of sharing your gifts electronically in this time of adaptation and innovation. God is with us. God is grateful for the ways that we honor the work of sharing God's love and following the way of love together. Let us thank God as we share our tithes and offerings now. Mighty and everlasting God, you willingly equip us with the strength, the insight, and the courage to meet every challenge the world sends our way. Make us bold to live as Christ's disciples when it seems like foolishness to many. May the gifts we offer you, the lives we live for you, the witness we make for you, be a testimony to the love that led Christ to the cross, his precious life given for each of us. When we leave this worship service, may our living bear witness to your giving. In Jesus' holy name, we pray.
Let us pray. Living God, when there is a famine in our souls, you feed us with grace. When there are pockets of poverty in our love for others, you bless us with generosity. When we are empty and alone, you move into our hearts. Jesus, bearer of the good things which have come to us, you bend down to lift us from despair. You embrace those who haven't a friend in the world. You open the eyes of those struck blind by arrogance and ambition. Eternal Spirit, you walk with us wherever we go. You take the fragments of our lives and reshape us into holy people. You are with us and not even death can separate us. God in community, holy in one, hear us as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me conclude this time of worship for today, hear these words of blessing. You have heard the words of healing and of peace. You have been blessed by the Spirit of God. Go now into God's world to be the spirit of hope, peace, and blessing for others, knowing that God is always with you. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>